Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Your Royal Majesties, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, uh, in rounding off uh, this session, we will now hear from the Chairman of Council, uh, His Excellency the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbaju. The representative of the Senate President, Senator John Owen Eno, Chairman, Senate Committee on Finance. Your Excellencies, the governors of the various states of Nigeria, Your Excellencies, Deputy Governors, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, Honorable Ministers here present, your Royal Majesties present here, the President of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Mr. Bill Gates, the President of the Dangote Foundation, Alaji Aliko Dangote, Development Partners, Heads of Government Agencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. Uh, let me start by saying how delighted I am that we're able to set aside today a special session of the National Economic Council and dedicate it to human capital development. And we're privileged to have with us uh, at this special expanded meeting of the National Economic Council, some of Nigeria's uh, most committed and valued philanthropic and development partners. Some of them, of course, as you know, are not Nigerians, but have become somewhat Nigerian by association. Uh, Mr. Bill Gates has been one of them. Um, he, of course, as you've heard, represents the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and of course, Alaji Aliko Dangote and the Dangote Foundation. On behalf of the government and people of Nigeria, I thank you for being here with us today, and especially for the game-changing work that you have done here in Nigeria by uniquely deploying huge resources and innovation through social enterprise to solving some of the most challenging issues of development that we face today. Uh, Bill, your special interest in Nigeria and your attention to a lot of the development concerns that we have. Uh, you've been all over the country, you've seen, uh, as you've said yourself, so much of what has, has been done and what uh, remains to be done. And at various times, uh, you have uh, intervened in various ways and made huge investments. I think uh, that the encouragement that you give uh, consistently entitles you to speak to us frankly, as you've done today, as a brother. And uh, I must say that we are engaged fully, as a government in particular, and as governments in the various uh, states, to ensure that we are able to address some of these concerns. Let, let, let me reiterate that not only are we painfully aware of the issues uh, that you've outlined, and many that have already been spoken of, including what the Honorable Minister of Health uh, also uh, mentioned, but we are prepared to take on those challenges uh, head on, and indeed we have no choice, because the problem literally grows every day. Our population happens to be the largest in Africa and one of the largest in the world. And in the next two decades, we will be, uh, some say the fourth, some say the third most populous country in the world. But Nigeria has strong uh, economic growth and development ambitions encapsulated in our Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, which we launched in 2017. All of those lofty ambitions can only be achieved through the determined application of human skill and effort and 
for that effort to be meaningful and productive, it has to come from people who are healthy, educated, and who are and feel empowered. It is this realization that, that, that has helped us to ensure that one of the primary planks of our economic recovery and growth uh, plan is, quote, investing in people. And I think you pointed that out also in, in the comments that you made. And it is for this reason that we're expanding the reach and quality of our healthcare through the National Healthcare Insurance Scheme and working to guarantee basic education for all persons whilst also upgrading and modernizing the quality of secondary and post-secondary education. And because of the nature of the time, this means that STEM education is critical, science, technology, engineering, and math, and that technology must lie at the heart of every one of our educational offerings. And I'll be talking about this very briefly as we go along. In 2016, we launched a social investment program comprising a job scheme for unemployed graduates, a feeding program for public primary schools, and a microcredit scheme for small businesses, a cash transfer scheme for our poorest and most vulnerable households. We started with a million. This social investment program, which is a key component of our economic recovery and growth plan, is possibly the most ambitious in Nigeria's history. It aims to ensure ultimately that no one is left behind and that Nigeria's wealth is more equitably distributed to its vulnerable populations, the young and old, male and female, regardless of where in the country they live or what language they speak. Let me say a bit more about the uh, school feeding program because it's important as it addresses especially the issue of stunting. Now the school feeding program is of course aimed at achieving better health nutritional and educational outcomes for Nigerian children. And we're working closely with the Partnership for Child Development, which is the PCD, a research body that's based in the Imperial College, London, with a track record of supporting interventions that translate into healthier and better educated children. The school feeding program currently serves over 7 million school children across 22 uh, states of Nigeria and continues to grow as more states sign up for it. One of the important health outcomes, of course, is that it is meant to address malnutrition and stunting. When you're able to feed, give children one good meal a day uh, in school, there is, and for us, this is, this is a balanced meal because we're also concerned about the, ex, about the diet and about uh, the components of that particular meal. And so it's important, you know, as part of, our, of the efforts that we make, that we look at what the content of that food is also. And that, you know, helps us to address the major concerns around nutrition and stunting. There are, of course, also important educational and economic benefits to the school feeding program. By guaranteeing a hot meal a day for these children, the scheme has pushed school enrollment rates upwards in many of the communities in which it's been implemented. In fact, in several of the communities, we've seen over 30% increase in enrollment just because the children are being fed uh, in school. It's also helped to boost the local economies by ensuring that the food served to the children is sourced from local farmers who tend to be smallholder farmers and prepared, and of course the food is prepared by local cooks. In many cases, these farmers and cooks are the parents and guardians of the school children. And so we are seeing, uh, and what we're seeing is that the program is bringing whole scale benefit to low income households. The program, uh, the SIP also has a strong monitoring and evaluation component that tracks not only the quality of the food that is being served, but also ensures that the intended outcomes are being delivered. Our cash transfer program, which we're delivering with the support of the World Bank, makes it imperative for beneficiaries to fulfill certain conditions related to health and education before they can receive their monthly stipends. These conditions range from mandatory antenatal care for pregnant women, to mandatory immunizations for nursing mothers, to minimum school attendance rates for parents of school-age children. So there is 
a connection between uh, the, the social investment program and the, the, the health